Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about representation in comic books and what stories I think do it extremely well and the importance of representation in media and in comic books in general. What I want to start off with by talking about is the importance of representation. It's funny, I watch movies back from like the 70s and 80s and I see like no variation in characters, pretty homogenized look. So one of the th things I want to talk about right off the bat is a movie that kind of comes up a lot when I talk about my favorite movies of all time, which relates to comic books, and that being Blade. Blade with Wesley Snipes is one of my favorite movies of all time, one of my favorite movies I watched as a kid. And the one thing I never thought about when I was watching Blade was the fact that Blade was black. There was no attention brought to the fact that Blade was black. Blade was cool because Blade was cool. It didn't matter whether Blade was black. It was cool that Blade was black. That was, that was part of it. That was what made it awesome. Movies and comics and media in general, I feel like we are just being drawn to, we're, 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 we're being forced to be point out, oh, this person is black. Did you know that person's black? Y yes, I did. That person's gay. Did you know that person was gay? Yes, yes, I know. You told me. And the reason they tell us, it's because they make the race of a person, they make the sexual orientation of a person a, a part of that person's character. I think it's completely wrong. And I want to talk about comic books that do this extremely, extremely well. The first book I want to talk about is Ed Brubaker's Gotham Central. If you haven't read this already, this is excellent. Think a Batman story based in Gotham, but instead of the focus being on Batman and the villains so much, it's on the police officers and the Gotham Central Police Force, their stories and how they have to relate and interact with, in a world with Batman and villains. Awesome premise, and by one of my favorite authors. One of the main protagonists is Rene Montoya. He's one of the police officers and one of the main characters in, in, the, in the story. So, Renee Montoya is kind of established as this badass. She's a hardcore cop. Uh, she's a fighter. She is basically a very powerful, strong character. You know what's not revealed immediately about Renee Montoya? Is that she's a lesbian. Now, Renee, Mo Renee Montoya is a lesbian. That is her sexual orientation. That does not make her who she is. Renee Montoya is a badass cop. She's a detective. There are multiple layers to Renee Montoya. Renee Montoya is not just characterized by her sexuality. However, this, this representation is done extremely well because of Renee Montoya's experience in the Gotham Central Police Department and what happens. So, Brubaker is able to take a sensitive topic, a topic that is important, representation in comic books and media, and weave it in such a way that it becomes part of the story and makes sense, and Renee Montoya is not labeled, and that is not her only character, is her sexuality. So one, the, the, main char the, the main story beat is she's being harassed, she's being uh, by some of the other the police officers in the force. Her family is not approving of her sexuality and her lifestyle. She has a significant other. Things happen to that significant other. It leads to major issues in the police force. I'm not going to spoil this because this needs to be read, but again, Ed Brubaker does not paint Renee Montoya in a, in a box of her only characteristics, of her only character traits being the fact that she's a lesbian. Now, another exa excellent example of this is Brian Azzarello's 100 Bullets. I talk about this book all the time. It's one of my favorites, and I actually just picked up the, uh, the first issue, the first appearance of Dizzy here recently. This is a book that is able to paint a picture of what it's like in a barrio, what it's like in, in a ghetto, what it's like in a impoverished, low income area, and do it in such a in a in a such a way that it's believable, it's respectful, it's 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 real. Like when I'm reading this book, 
I am in that world. I, I'm reading these characters. This is Dizzy. This is these characters. Like, regardless of Brian Azzarello's nationality, his ethnicity, I don't. I don't even know what Brian Azzarello looks like. I, I do not know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if he's Hispanic, Latino, white, black. I don't have any idea what Brian Azzarello is. And that is what a good writer is. Somebody that is able to put themselves in another person's shoes and not label a character based strictly on their ethnicity, their heritage, what race they are. It's actually painting a picture, actually weaving a story. It's not just laziness. So many of these things that I see now, and I can't even read a lot of modern, super modern books that are just received because characters, it's almost disrespectful in a way because their character is only based around their sexuality. An example that comes to mind right off the bat is Superman, Son of Kal-El. I, I literally, I couldn't even read that. Um, and there's too many to even count. Uh, one one perfect example is a, a, a book called DC Pride, where it's literally just let's put a bunch of LBGTQ characters together, and let's sell that as a way to show our virtue, our virtue, our virtue signaling. We hey we we uh, we, we are inclusive, but we're gonna label this book as this is a this is a gay book. I can't wrap my head around how somebody in the LBGTQ community would not find that offensive. When I read books like this, I see representation done correctly. I see um, respect given. I see characters that are not based only on their sexual orientation and their race and their ethnicity. I see characters for who they are and that being a part of who they are, not being labeled and defined by who they are. Guys, what is your opinion on this? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.